Good morning, everyone. It's always place a cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. You know, um, living for Christ is a lifelong journey. It doesn't stop when you go into church and be like, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe he died on the cross for my sins and rose. That's just the beginning. Mm. You know, you know, you hear that saying, once saved, always saved. That is true in a, in a context for some. Mm -hmm. That is not true for every, that's true for everyone, every saint. You know, that's not true for everyone. And it's just, it's a fact. It's in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Yes, us as Christians, we love to believe that we're set for life. And we are, if we stay at it. But it's not like, hey, I gave my life over to God. Now I ain't got to do nothing else no more. It's the end of my journey. I'm good for the rest of my life. No. What comes with becoming a Christian is reading the Bible, getting to know Jesus, getting it, going through trials and tribulations, learning, growing. Because there's so many different stages in your walk as a Christian. The best way I can explain the stages in your life is the sower and the seed. Because at one point in time, each and every one of us have been in one of those stages. So think about it. The fourth stage is the final stage when you start bearing fruit. <laughs> None of the other three stages of the sower seed are complete, except the fourth. And it's the same fourth stage is revealed in Revelations. You got a key. Let's, let me read that right quick. It's just, I have to. This is the, uh, chapter 3 of Revelations, starting with verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy throne, thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go out no go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which come on, cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. The reason I brought that one up, because that's the only one he said, just stay true. So I'm telling you right now, just stay true, people. Stay true. Keep his word. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're talking about keys. I'm going to tell you somebody who had the key. <laughs> somebody in the Bible that is often overlooked because he's not in there long. Elijah and Elijah. But today, I'm focusing on Elijah. With an S. They sound so familiar. Think about this. The power of the Lord was working so strong to Elijah and Elijah that it was like they were operating in the perfect will of God. And you have to see it. You know, a lot of times you're going to be like, what would you have? You're going to hear this saying, what would you have me do for you? Now, think in your mind. That's the Lord speaking through Elijah. What would you have me do for you? Mm. Chapter 4. Now that cried a, of uh, uh, second kings. Now that cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, 
thy servant, my husband is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. Did you hear that key element? And thou know that I, thy servant did fear the Lord. What's, what's the, the fear of the Lord? The start of wisdom, the start of understanding. Mm. Now think about it. This is her now. Uh, well, do this apply for everyone? No, but it applies to her because she fears the Lord. Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditors come to take unto me, him, my two sons, to be bondmen. How many of y'all have financial issues? It ain't nothing new under the sun. And Elijah said to her, What shall I do for thee? I don't know what's going on right now, but hey, God is asking you right now. What shall I do for you? I know what you're going through. I know your patience. I know how you keep my word. What do you want me to do? Now, remember, God said, I give you the desires of your heart. You got to understand your desires of your heart got to line up with his will also. And Elijah said to her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me what hast thou in thy house. And she said, Thou the handmaid have nothing, not anything in the house, save one pot of oil, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. Now remember, she's in debt. And she's crying out because of the debt she's in. Mm. Boy, this is for somebody. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said it to her, There's not a vessel more in the all state. Look at that. <laughs> What's the old saying, God is our own time, God? Think in regards to your life. How many times you feel like you got your odds ends? Like, what am I going to do? You done got in debt, or this or that. And the Lord's like, what you want me to do? I will help you. I see that you're obedient to me. I see that you're trusting in me. Now I'm going to give you an even better reason to trust me. And it, then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Wow. She lost her husband. She probably was praying, like, Lord, what am I going to do? And God sent the man named Elijah. That's working in his will. And guess what? He's going to send you and me and many other people. Operate his will to bring somebody else out of debt. To bring somebody else out of bondage. Mm. And it fell on the day that Elijah passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned and thither to eat bread. She must have felt the presence of the Lord from Elijah. And she said to her husband, Below, Behold, now I perceive that this is the holy man of God. Bible, the Bible says, Test the spirits to see if they're of God or not. She didn't just come to him instantly. Mm -hmm. But she examined him. I perceive that this is a holy man of God which passes by us continually. What did he say? Entertain strangers? Mm hmm. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him a dairy bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick, and it shall be when he comes to us that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi his servant, Call this Shumanite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, Say now to her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or the captain of the host? And she answered, 
I dwell among my own people. Look real close at what he said. Would it not be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, verily she have no child and her husband is old. Hmm. And he called her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, about this season, God knows what you have need of before you even ask. But sometimes we still just got to let him know. But in this case, he knew. It was time. All these years, she'd been wanting the child. And it helping one random stranger that she never knew lead her to get a child. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie to thy handmaid. She doubted. And the woman conceived <laughs> and bare a son at that season that Elijah had said unto her, according to the time of life, nine months later. And when the child was grown, it fell on the day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. And he says to the lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees to noon, and then he died. That's got to be a horrible feeling. For God to bless you with a child, and then the child dies. Wow. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and shut the door upon him and went out. Now think about this. Why would she do that? She knew something. Something in her spirit knew something would happen. And she called to her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. <laughs> there was a message in there. Told him the Lord, Anytime. Mm -hmm. Then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward, slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her fall, that he said to Gehazi his servant, Behold, yonder is the Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her. And say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, let her alone. Sound familiar. People tried to run to Jesus. No, no, get away from him. Don't touch him. Hmm. I'll be found of them that seek me. And the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord have hid it from me and have not told me. Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? God is not a father of deceit. Then he said to Gehazi, gird up thy loins and take my staff in thine hand. And go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. And follow the death. Listen to the instructions. The man of God didn't even have to go. Was it power in the staff? No, faith. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. But either way, a child, something would have happened if she would have listened. But it's okay. And Gehazi passed up, passed on before them, and laid the staff upon the face of the child. One thing you're going to realize about Gehazi, he wasn't endowed with the power of the Lord like Elijah was. Maybe his faith was in there. Wherefore he went again, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awake. And Elijah, when Elijah was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in therefore and shut the door upon the twain, them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child 
and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. One thing I'm going to tell you people from this story. Never give up on what God can do. You mean, there was a certain situation with David when David lost it. God told him the child would die and David prayed and prayed. He was like, and then the child died. And he said, I kept praying because I don't know whether the God would have brought the child back or would he kill killed, but I'm going to keep praying anyway. And he accepted it. So every situation is different, people. Then he turned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shumanite. So he called her. And when she was coming to him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. And Elijah came again to give God. You see, you want to be so filled with the Holy Spirit that God uses you to accomplish his works like he used Elijah and Elijah and David and many other people. And Elijah, Elijah came again to Gilgal and there was a dolph in the land. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him and he sat unto him, said unto his servant, set on the great pot and see if pot is for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered therefore wild gourds his lap full and came and shred them into the pot of pottage for they knew them not. So they just grabbed some. They was hungry. So they poured out for the men to eat. And it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said, Oh, thou man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat their own. Hmm. But he said, if you shall eat anything harmful, look at the New Testament when he talks about that. But he said, then bring meal. And he cast it into the pot. And he said, pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. God can make the unclean clean. <laughs> Boy, you can get so many messages out of here. I don't even know where I'm going with this. I'm just going with the flow. And there came a man from Baal Salisha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits. 20 loaves of barley and full ears of corn in the hush thereof. And he said, give it to the people that they may eat. Now look about this. this is a man of God. He brought the first fruits. That's considered like tithes. But did he just use it for himself? A lot of y'all pastors and preachers and y'all better learn. And his servitor said, what should I set this before? A hundred men? He said again, give the people that they may eat. For thus said the Lord, they shall eat and shall leave thereof. So he said it before them, and they did eat and left thereof according to the word of the Lord. Man, this is when I started hearing the different stories in regards to Elijah and Elijah, I was like, boy, just imagine. God said, It's my good pleasure to give you king, give you the kingdom. See, I know the thoughts I think towards you. You know, all this stuff leans up. A lot of people don't like to read the Old Testament for some reason. Well, you can learn a lot from the Old Testament. Elijah and Elijah <laughs> doing major miracles, working the power of the Lord, working through them. They were so bold and so courageous. But for real people, God sees what you're going through. He sees everything. And he always sends help. You just have to pay attention. You have to stay constantly seeking him. I just love what the lady said. You know I feel the Lord. Why God, God probably thinking, why you think he's here? You see a lot of blessings and things that God has prepared for many of us because we don't keep the faith. We give up. We doubt. We don't trust that the Lord would make a way out of no way when it seems no way. 
Just think about that all. What was the other one with Elisha? The stories are so similar. Let me pause and I will continue. 